Greetings, Earthlings, and a very happy new year. Today, I am back with a review of a brand new broadcasting condenser microphone from Earthworks. That microphone being the new Earthworks XLR Icon Pro. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $500. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. And for this review, I have the microphone connected directly to the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen. The gain is set at around 11 o'clock and I will not do any kind of post processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post. So check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course, you are going to get the microphone. You'll get this great triad orbit mount, and you'll get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, but unfortunately, I don't know if it's this exact one because I've had it for a while, and I always forget which adapter is the one that comes in the box. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels outstanding, just like Earthworks' other offerings. Same aesthetic and same build quality, just excellent. It does have an all stainless steel construction as well as a metal grill. It is a hefty boy weighing in at 1.5 pounds. Here is what the capsule looks like without the grill on it. The rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port and that is it on the microphone. The triad orbit mount has a single rubberized screw. You unscrew this and it allows you to rotate the microphone any which way that you want and tightening it down does a great job holding the microphone in that position. And unfortunately, the box and the packaging and the microphone do not list the manufacturing location of this mic, so I don't know where it's made. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 hertz all the way up to 30 kilohertz, a sensitivity of around negative 34 dB, an impedance of 65 ohms, a self noise of approximately 16 dBA, a max SPL of 139 dB, and a phantom power requirement of plus 24 to plus 48 volts. Now I am spinning around the Icon Pro to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around the microphone to 180 degrees. Here's what it sounds like from the rear. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. Now let's see how well this microphone does at rejecting plosives. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to demonstrate the proximity effect on this thing. About three inches off of the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how the audio sounds. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Yay! Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you elite gamers, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room. Now I'll go ahead and tap my desk to see how much of that noise the provided mount is able to reject and I'll tap the boom arm. Now, to be extremely annoying, I am going to go ahead and tap the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to go ahead and switch back and forth between the Icon Pro and a couple of other microphones on the market so we can see where this microphone stacks up against the competition. We are starting on the Icon Pro and currently I am six inches off of the microphone. My gain is set at 12 o'clock. Make sure to check the lower third to see how much I'm boosting each of these microphones in post. But here is how the microphone sounds. Let's jump to the first mic and compare it to that. 
And first up, we have the Blue Yeti, which is one of the most popular streaming microphones. This goes for around $90 to $100. I am on the cardioid mode six inches away. Gain on the mic is set at 9 o'clock. Gain on my computer is set at around 65 to 70-ish percent. And let's jump back to the Earthworks and do a couple more comparisons. We are back on the Icon Pro, and here is... Why did I pronounce that so weird? Icon Pro? And here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to another one so you can hear how it compares to that. Now we are on the Audio-Technica AT2020, which is a $100 XLR small diaphragm condenser microphone gain at 12 o'clock make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boosted this one but here is how this microphone compares against the Earthworks Icon Pro which is $500 as opposed to $100 we are back on the Icon Pro again who would have thunk it here is how this microphone sounds same distance same gain setting same boosting, all of that stuff. Let's jump to another microphone and get a bit more context for this microphone. Now I am speaking into the Earthworks Icon, which is the USB version of the Icon Pro. The gain on the microphone is set at 50%. Gain on the computer is set at 50%. Six inches away from the microphone. And here is how this sounds compared to the Pro version of this thing. I bet you would have never considered this, but I am back on the Icon Pro again. What? Mind blowing, right? Here is how this microphone sounds. Why am I being such a jerk to you today? <laughs> Here is how this microphone sounds. Let's jump to another one and hear that. Now I am on the Shure SM7B about six inches away from the capsule of the microphone. Because this is a dynamic and a very quiet dynamic microphone at that I cranked my gain up to 100%, check the lower third to see if I boosted it any more in post as well. According to gaming careers, this is the most popular streaming microphone, so I figured what better microphone to compare the Icon Pro against than the SM7B, and here is how it sounds. Let's jump back to the Icon Pro and do another comparison. And I think we have one more microphone that we're comparing it against. Now there is a loud plane outside, but... I am six inches off, gain at 12 o'clock on the Earthworks Icon Pro. Let's jump to the last microphone and hear how it compares to that. And lastly, we are on the Earthworks SR314, which is one of their main handheld stage condenser microphones. This goes for around $700. I am at the same distance, same gain setting. Check the lower third to see how much I boosted it. But here is what 200 extra dollars gets you compared to the Icon Pro. Let me know in the comments down below which of these microphones did you like the best. Did you like the 700, the 500, the 7B, the other things that we looked at? Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> It's 2021 and I think we should all be careful Do not trust the world cause the world wants you dead I know it's a bit morose, I know it's a bit dark, but I think it's fairly accurate. I just don't want you all to get your hopes up. I said have a great year last year, look how it turned out. Nothing has changed except for the calendar year. All the crazy stuff that was going on in the world is continuing. For instance, I hit myself in the lip with my headphones before I started recording, and I'm getting a fat lip. The calendar year had no effect on that. Why am I still talking? Let's go to the outro. Stop. Outro time. Earthworks is a company. That company makes microphones. Those microphones that the company Earthworks makes are some of the most realistic and lifelike microphones that I have ever heard. Weird start to the outro, isn't it? <laughs> 
But like always, we will start with some pros. And the first thing that stuck out to me was the rear rejection at the knoll area was excellent. So if you play that, you can get some great background noise rejection. Also, the rejection of bumps of the boom arm, the desk, and the handling noise of the microphone was excellent. Did a great job at eliminating that. The off-axis coloration of the microphone was also outstanding, meaning if you're in an untreated room and you have a bunch of reverb, the sound that makes it in through the side of the microphones isn't going to sound gross and offensive to your ears. Also, the Triad Orbit Mount is incredible. I love this thing, and I kind of want it on my microphone stand all the time now. It is so useful being able to rotate it in any way, shape, or form that you want to. It is awesome. And for those who are at all concerned about looks, this thing looks really cool. Kind of like you'll do some kind of crazy surgery on your stream. Because <laughs> it kind of does remind me of some kind of medical instrument. But I don't want to know. <laughs> I don't want to know where it would go on you. <laughs> I don't... Keep that information to yourself. And then as far as cons, there is very little that I don't like about this microphone. But if I were to get extremely nitpicky, I would like to see a slightly lower self noise because 16 dBA is getting a little bit high, especially at the $500 price point. Something like the Rode NT1 has, I think, 6 dBA. Of course, that is a large diaphragm. The Earthworks is a small diaphragm condenser, different properties, but I still would like to see a slightly lower self noise. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions on this microphone? First up on the electric guitar, I really enjoyed it on that. The way I would describe it is even. I enjoyed how smooth it sounded throughout the entire frequency range. Nothing popped out as piercing or harsh. Even when I got to the upper register of the guitar, it still maintained a smooth and pleasing sound. So on the electric guitar, I found it pretty enjoyable to use. Then on the acoustic guitar, this thing sounds bonkers on that thing. It brought the damn thing to life. That is something that I don't say very often, but it brought the acoustic to life. The top end was crystal clear without sounding brittle or artificial. The mids were nice and neutral and accurate, and the low end was full while also being controlled. It's the exact type of sound that I look for for an acoustic guitar microphone. Absolutely awesome. On the acoustic. Next up for singing, I thought it offered a very balanced sound, but I was a little bit surprised at how detailed and airy it sounded. If that's the sound that you're going for, true to life, like you're in the room with the singer, then I think this would work really well for singing. And lastly, for spoken word, why am I smashing the box? I dig it, as well as I should given the price and the fact that it is marketed as a broadcast quality XLR streaming microphone, assuming that means it's a vocal microphone, a spoken word microphone, and I think it is, and I think it sounds great for that. If I had to give it a catchphrase, I would say realistic and shockingly smooth. Put that on a billboard, Earthworks, you'll sell millions of them. Realistic and shockingly smooth. Really, though, it does have a very open and airy and detailed and articulate top end, but it doesn't sound over boosted, which is a hole that a lot of condensers seem to fall down. The mids were also very open sounding, and I know that's weird to describe mids as open, but sometimes mids can start to sound a little bit claustrophobic and closed off and also a little bit nasally. This didn't have any of that. And the low end was extremely controlled. There was no muddiness. There was no boxiness. Even when you get right on top of the microphone, it just maintains this beautiful, neutral, and flat sound that is... I guess you could describe the sound of the microphone as maybe a little bit analytical or a bit sterile, but I think that it offers that great, neutral, and very clear sound, which I am all about. There you go. 
And now, would I recommend the Earthworks Icon Pro XLR Broadcast Condenser Microphone? I think I would. I think I would. If your budget is around 50 1500 No, it's not 1500 It's 500 Why would I jump to 1500 bucks? That's a lot of money. If your budget is around $500 and you're looking for more of a general all-rounder condenser microphone in this form factor, or if you're looking for a broadcast condenser microphone, I think it is a great option. The thing that really stood out to me about this microphone is it does something that not many condensers are able to do. I'll start by saying why I love the SM7B. It's because it's a smooth sounding microphone. It is relatively neutral. It is a bit dark, but it is smooth sounding. You could listen to this for hours on end without having any kind of fatigue on your ears. The Earthworks does something similar and it maintains a smooth sound but it adds a bit more air to it, a bit more openness to the top end, which the 7B is missing. And it also removes a bit of that nasaliness that the SM7B tends to have. So if you're looking for that kind of sound, I think it is tight, super duper tight. Great job, Earthworks. I dig it to repeat myself for the 50th time. All right, I think that is going to wrap up for today. I would love to hear from you. Which of the microphones that I compared did you like the best? The Icon Pro, the Icon USB, the Blue Yeti, Audio-Technica, SM7B, SR314. Any of them, let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? You can subscribe. Click that logo down beneath me. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. Get notified of all the videos that I do. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really does help me continue to bring you these videos. I bet you didn't think that I could get any more annoying, but I just continued to prove you wrong. <laughs> Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I love you all. Happy New Year's, and I will talk to you later.